Now, let me discuss about the class 1B agents. If you take this class 1B agents, the class 1B antiarrhythmic agents, they include lignocaine, alright, they include lignocaine and the next drug is what is called as mexilitine, right, mexilitine and next we have tokenide and then we have phenytoin right then we have phenytoin so these are the class 1b antiarrhythmic agents that is lignocaine mexilitine tokenide and as well as the phenytoin now let me tell you the mechanism of action of this class 1b agents so remember these are the sodium channel blockers Alright, these are the sodium channel blockers and along with the sodium channel blocking activity, right, along with the sodium channel blocking activity, these drugs, they also possess the potassium channel opening property. Right, they possess potassium channel opening property. All right. So this is what is the mechanism for lignocaine, mexilitine, tokenide and as well as phenytoin. Now, now a point what you should understand here is what are they doing to the potassium channels? They are seeing that the potassium channels are being opened. So once the potassium channels are being opened along with the sodium blockade, what does these drugs do? These drugs will try to exit the potassium out of the cell very fastly. So that is the reason why the class 1B agents, they have the fast onset and offset kinetics. Okay. So these class 1B agents, they have fast onset and fast offset kinetics. Right. They have fast onset and as well as the offset kinetics. So how much is that? That is less than one second. Right. That is less than one second. Right. Now, let me tell you what does that mean? It means that they have little or no effect on the slow heart rates and they have the more effect on the faster heart rates. So what I want to tell you is this class 1B agents, they have the effect on the faster heart rates. Right, they have the effect on the faster heart rates. Now, the other point is these agents, what are they doing? They are opening the potassium channels, they are causing the movement of the potassium channels out of the cell. So, these agents they shorten the action potential duration and they reduce the refractoriness. Okay, so these agents. they shorten the action potential duration and they reduce all right they reduce the refractoriness right they reduce the refractoriness now why is that they are shortening the action potential duration and reducing the refractoriness because of the opening of the potassium channels right because of opening of right because of the opening of the potassium channels they will reduce the refractoriness and they will also shorten the action potential duration now the other point is these agents they will decrease the vmax Right, they will decrease the velocity maximum. Why? Because they are blocking the sodium channels. So once the sodium channels are blocked, there is no rapid depolarization. So that is, these agents, they will reduce the Vmax in partially the action potential duration in non-depolarized tissues. So remember a point here, 
these drugs they will decrease the Vmax. Now these drugs are used only for ventricular arrhythmias. Right, they are used only for right, they are used only for the ventricular arrhythmias. So, among the class 1B agents, the antiarrhythmic drug which is most commonly used is the lignocaine. So, if you take lignocaine, right, this is one of the Right, this is one of the most commonly used local anesthetic agent. Right, this is most commonly used local anesthetic agent as an anti arrhythmic drug in class 1B. Now, a point what you should remember is if you take this lignocaine, remember lignocaine it has very high first pass metabolism. Because it has very high first pass metabolism, therefore lignocaine is administered only by the intravenous route. Okay, so lignocaine, if you see, it has very high first pass metabolism, right? Very high first pass metabolism. Now, because it is having very high first pass metabolism. Therefore, it is administered by the intravenous route. Right? Therefore, it is administered by the intravenous route. Now, let me tell you another important point. You take the adverse effects of this lignocaine. Whenever you give lignocaine in excessive dose, that can lead to the neurological toxicity. Okay? So, excessive dose of lignocaine what is the adverse effect is that can lead to the neurological toxicity right that can lead to the neurological toxicity and what will be the neurological toxicity associated with the lignocaine is it will cause drowsiness right it will cause paresthesia Right, it will cause drowsiness, paresthesia, convulsions, and as well as coma. Right, drowsiness, paresthesia, convulsions, and coma. Now, apart from this particular neurological toxicity, the excessive dose of this lignocaine will result in what is called as the myocardial depression. Right, will result in what is called as the myocardial depression. Okay, so this is the adverse effect associated with the lignocaine. Now, if you take one very important point regarding the lignocaine, remember lignocaine is the drug of choice for the treatment of ventricular arrhythmias due to digitalis toxicity. Right, this is a very important multiple choice question. So, if you take lignocaine, this is considered to be the drug of choice for digitalis induced ventricular arrhythmias, right? Drug of choice for ventricular arrhythmias due to digitalis toxicity, right? Due to digitalis toxicity. Now, a point what you should remember is this particular lignocaine is ineffective in atrial arrhythmias. Right, this particular lignocaine is ineffective in case of the atrial arrhythmias. All right, now apart from lignocaine, there is one more important drug in class 1b that is called as mexilitin. Right, so if you take this mexilitin. Right, if you take this particular mexilitin, remember this mexilitin, it is one of the orally active agent. Right, this mexilitin, this is one of the orally active lignocaine derivative with all the properties of lignocaine. So, a 
point what you should remember is mexilitin it is derived from lignocaine right it is derived from lignocaine and this mexilitin it has all the properties right it has all the properties similar to lignocaine right it has all the properties which is similar to that of lignocaine now so after lignocaine and mexilitin we have one more class 1b agent that is phenytoin right so in 1b there is one more drug which is nothing but phenytoin now what exactly is your phenytoin remember phenytoin it is one of the anti epileptic drug all right this is one of the anti epileptic drug where do we use this phenytoin remember this phenytoin can be used as an alternative to lignocaine for digitalis induced ventricular arrhythmias right so where do we use this phenytoin is this particular phenytoin it is used as an alternative right it is used as an alternative to lignocaine for digitalis induced ventricular arrhythmias right that is the place where we use this phenytoin so remember phenytoin is a popular anti epileptic drug and it is used as an alternative to lignocaine for digitalis induced ventricular arrhythmias next next to the phenytoin we have another very important drug in class 1b that is your tocainide right that is your tocainide now remember in group 1b that is class 1b this particular drug tocainide it is having similar name as group 1c drugs now what are your 1c drugs they include enkenide and as well as flecainide right now your tocainide is similar to that of enkenide and as flecainide but a point what you should remember is this particular tocainide this is class 1b agent right this is class 1b agent and how is this given this is given orally right this is given orally right but this particular tocainide it is not used widely right it is not used widely now why is this not used widely is because of risk of agranulocytosis okay so right this is not used widely because of risk of agranulocytosis so that is about your tocainide now let me shortly revise all the anti arrhythmic drug in class 1b agents remember the drug what we have is the lignocaine lignocaine is the most commonly used local anesthetic agent and a point is it has very high first pass metabolism that is the reason why it is given by the intravenous route and if you take the adverse effects of this lignocaine the excessive dose can lead to the neurological toxicity and as well as myocardial depression the neurological toxicity it includes drowsiness paresthesia convulsions and as well as coma now if you take this lignocaine it is the drug of choice for the treatment of ventricular arrhythmias due to digitalis toxicity a point what you should remember is this particular lignocaine is ineffective in case of the atrial arrhythmias all right next you have another class 1b agent that is mexilitin mexilitin the route of administration is the oral route of administration and it is derived from the lignocaine and this mexilitin it has all the properties of the lignocaine now you take the other important drug that is phenytoin it is a popular anti epileptic drug and it can be used as an alternative to lignocaine for digitalis induced ventricular arrhythmias next the other drug what we have is the tocainide tocainide the route of administration is the oral route of administration but it is not used widely because of risk of the agranulocytosis